severe, severe level. And in the in recovery, there's a program called 12 Steps, and they have a book and everything. And this statement isn't out of the book, but it's out of people who were reading the book and trying to live this way of life came to this conclusion that self can't get out of self. So this idea of you, which is not you, cannot get out of the idea of you, though it's going to keep on trying. Yeah. So without knowing it, you're in this act of being identified with that which can't get out of itself. And you're trying to see, trying to understand that. It won't work. You will just keep trying to get out of yourself. Yeah. Drugs, spirituality, jobs, this and that, travel, not travel. They'll just on and on and on and on. Because you're trying to convince something that can't be convinced. It's already convinced. Its programming is, in a sense, already sealed. It's not AI. It's not growing in understanding. It runs into its ceiling, and it can't go any farther. Sort of like when you wind up a toy, and it hits something, and then it just keeps hitting it. As long as it has momentum, it just keeps doing it. It doesn't turn. It just bounce, bounce, bounce. Exactly. So this is the most important part of the message is the warnings that go with the message. And the warning is, I understand I will never understand. That which you're not is never going to get it. It's never going to get it. I understand I will never understand. It's just constantly going to try to understand. Yeah, that's what it does. If it doesn't understand, it rationalizes, makes shit up. And some people, they just don't, they say their understanding is I'm fucking not going to listen to anything anyone else ever says. I just fucking believe this and fuck that. Yeah. But this is a fact. This is where you're brought to by entertaining the little breadcrumbs of non duality. It will bring you beautifully, not I understand I will never understand, but I am not the I that cannot understand that it will never understand. Yeah, beautiful. Saves you a lot of time because your head is going to keep trying to understand. It's going to ah, go this way, another way. No, it just doesn't give up. And you know, it's the same dilemma where people want to go to like a free will and no free will seminar. Yeah. And a lot of people are interested in this idea. Is there free will or is there predetermination? And then it gets even slicker. Some people believe free will is part of the predetermination, which is tricky, yes? And everyone's excited about going to that seminar. But really, the message, as a great master said, Ramana Maharshi, if you haven't heard of him and you come to these talks, you're going to. He's like the godfather of non-duality. And so... He had been confronted with this question tons of freaking times. And he said, uh, his answer this one time is so beautiful. And it's the one I gravitate towards. It says, because in time, there's befores and after. Yeah. And in a lot of time, in time, what's before influences what comes after more than what is after come influences what's before. Yeah. So just like they say, if they can get a lie out there faster than the truth, the lie travels farther and faster than the truth and gets established easier. Yes. Boom. And now everyone believes what they've heard against the evidence that it never happened. Yeah, it's very easy. It's very trick. So that which comes before is usually going to be that which affects what comes after. The after is probably not going to affect what's before. Yeah, so this is very important with this stuff. I feel it's not important. You just hear it and let it wash over you. Because in this thing of self can't get out of self, I, in this experience of this life, this life took that idea as far as it fucking could take it. It was not getting it. It just tried drugs, spirituality, back to drugs, on and on, different ways of drugs to the point where it said, you know, I'm getting out of this for 20 seconds. I'm going to overdose on Coke. And before I physically leave my body, I'm going to be free for at least 15, 20 seconds. And it seemed working. So worked hard at trying to overdose, but it had a problem because 
if you've been on a run for a couple of days, you're not putting the needle into your arm because you're fucking shook up. So you have to have someone else push the fucking needle in there. And that someone else may watch your eyes as he pushes the needle in, and you're going to go off and they stop out of the mercy of fucking camaraderie. Yeah, now you wanted to go farther. You put more in there, but it doesn't deliver it. So you flip out, but you come back. Yeah, and yet the next few days you do it again. You do it again because I humbly believe there will be a point when the body's dying that I'll be free from fucking fall. That was the drive. <laughs> yeah, that is not understanding. Uh, I, I'm i not being able to understand. It just, this cannot, it has not, it does not have the ability to understand its own failure, the head. It doesn't. That's why it spends tons of times on rationalizing, blaming, pointing the figure at yourself and others, yeah? Because it doesn't have the mechanism to go there. It doesn't. And when we're aligned with it as if it's us, we get super fucking frustrated because we're ten paying tons of money and tons of time to get it convinced and it can't get convinced. Yeah. You can have a two week seminar 24 seven. There is no free will completely intellectually clear. There is no free will. And when you go into Baskin Robbins and you thought you were going to order coffee, then you switched to mocha. You've just blown all the fucking knowledge of free will, not having free will out of the fucking thing. So this is very important in a way, at the, as the message is, we're not talking to that which can't be talked to. Yeah, we're not. Yeah. It's not ne necessary for what you're not to agree with the message of what you're not. It's not necessary at all. And it's, in, it's impossible. It can't do it. The only way it can hear the message is as the hearer of the message. No matter what that message is, if the message is there is no hearer of the message, it has a sense of being the one who heard that message. It just, it, you can't, seriously, there's not a point where it's, it, I don't know. I took it with drug use as far as I felt. And even at that last period, there was no point. It wasn't getting it. Yeah. I mean, I could have seen it, but I mean, it was really, I took it as far as I could take it and it still wasn't getting it there. Yeah. So I, the beauty of this message is it led me to things I could never have found. It just led me to my own uh, impossibilities. Really. It was literally incredible. I couldn't get, the only way I would have ever seen getting out of everything as the thing I wanted to get out of. That was the dilemma. I was stuck in this thing. Self is trying to get out of self, yes. A lot of people, self is trying to get out of self through non-duality. Does that mean stop going to non-duality? No, just see you're not that self that's trying to get out of self through non-duality. That's all, that's the beauty of it. And actually the one needs to get out of, out of self through non-duality, it can bring it into such a sharp contrast. It's awesome. Because in other mechanisms, you may not see the obviousness of what you're not. But in the non-duality, with the understanding of non-duality, it's almost like it illuminates what you're not. So you can finally recognize it from what you are. Yeah. And then everything that you've heard in non-duality makes fucking sense. Not by studying, but by the hearing of it. Yeah, because you see, you can't use yourself to find yourself. Yeah, simple statement. Yeah, can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. What? Yeah, you can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. Well, can I use Buddhism to seek the Buddha? No, that's the Buddha, probably not. Yeah, you can... What? I would shoot him. <laughs> Unless it was a statue, then I'd sell it. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what I did for years. <laughs> I saw a Buddha as a statue, I sold it. <laughs> you know why, obviously, if you see the Buddha on the road, you projected your own nature into something else. And in projecting it into this idea of being the Buddha outside of you, it's not serving you. So they say, go shoot that idea. Yes. So yeah, you're willing to say this person or that person, especially if they're dead, it's great. Oh yeah, 
He was a Buddha. As long as he's not here now, he was a Buddha. <laughs> but you see, it's the way the head projects. It's a way of denying something by affirming something else. So you're affirming, oh, that person's the Buddha. But in using that person as the Buddha, you're denying the Buddhahood of your, where you are. Yeah, this is how the mental state works. So it says, you know, when you see the Buddha, shoot the Buddha or whatever. Yeah. So in this, it's you can't use Buddhism to seek. Uh, you can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. And he says it three different ways, which is awesome. He says you can't use big M mind to seek mind, big M mind, and you can't use light to seek light. Simple statement. Yeah. It's not about a debate or anything, you know, or a commentary. It's just about land and let's see where it takes you. Because you actually, the way he's speaking, he's seeing the you that you think you are as not you. And he's talking directly to the Buddha that you are. And he's telling the Buddha under, under this false camouflage of AKA being Paul, he's trying to get around Paul and speak directly to the Buddha and say, hey, Buddha, he can't be used to... Look for yourself. The Buddha sees that and sees what's the act of I'm being used to look for myself. It's called Paul. <laughs> Paul that thinks it's a noun, but just act, it's just an activity of selfing. So this activity of selfing is using the Buddha to seek for the Buddha as Paul. Using light to seek for light as Paul when I'm light. Yeah. Using mind to seek mind as Paul, as on mind, yeah? So basically, what's looking is what you're looking for, and what you're looking for or what you're looking for with is what's looking. Yeah, you're, look, you're using awareness to look for awareness. Doesn't work. Wang Po said, it's, you can do it for eons, it's not gonna work. I mean, eons is pretty long, right? <laughs> he said, nothing's going to come of it. It's just going to go on and on and on and on and on because that which is doing it can't correct its fucking self. That which is using the Buddha to seek the Buddha doesn't get that. It thinks it's Paul using Buddhism to seek the Buddha. And it makes an incredible amount of sense to Paul that I'm going to use Buddhism to seek the Buddha. But unfortunately for Paul, it's not Paul. It's Buddha. This is the assumption of non-duality. If you like it or not, that's it. It says, Ramana says, being ourselves reality. Let's call reality Buddha, reality big M mind, reality light, but they're saying the same thing. Being ourselves that, which isn't like you're going in and out of it or you can be it for a one day and not be it. No, it's a fact. You are what you're looking for. That's just a fact from the non-duality non view. It's a fact. It's not like, oh, you once were and then you did something, now you're not. No, nope. it says, no matter what you believe or think or remember or whatever, you're that. Okay? Being ourselves reality, any moment that you're thinking about yesterday or today is being right now, yeah? And being right now, you are reality. Being ourselves reality. What? Yeah. So what is going on that may wish it could get it, really would hope to get it, but it wants to get it with it in involved, yeah? Which is, it's the getting of it is the negation of that which wants to get it. That's the whole point, see? The negation of that which wants to get it is the getting of it. So it's, there's not one point that, all right, you're super clear, you can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha, and now you're going to get on the vehicle of Paul, and you're going to do just that. It, there's no point it gets there. The idea of Paul as the vehicle, as the Buddha, by the Buddha, with the Buddha, is the negation of the message non-duality. That's what gets negated. It doesn't get affirmed. It doesn't get, oh... You'll be suspended for a while, but when we get close, you're coming and you're going to be there. You're going to be there to experience your own absence. Yeah, unbelievable. 
really, just hold on longer. I think you can pull it off. It can pull it off. It's one of its mechanical fucking aberrations. It cannot correct itself. This is not AI. It hits a ceiling and it just keeps going. What happens? It keeps going, starts feeling defeat, let's say in Buddhism, moves to Kabbalah. Yeah? Or it adds Tantra. Or it does something, but it just will, will not get the fucking truth. Yeah, Self can't get out of self. So where's the solution? The solution is in being ourselves reality. So in a way, from the view of non-duality, you've never been in self, and therefore there's no need to get out of self. And so the, the, the great relief from self is not a, a, an incredible radical idea to escape, but realizing the wisdom of no escape. You cannot escape from a place you're not in. So selfing is going on as many other things are going on. What it implies is the, an idea that you're a self, that everything is going on too, which is erroneous, yeah? So basically what you're dealing with is a worshiping of selfing, and in that worshiping of selfing, the ideation of what's going on in the head, there's an image that is provoked and that's self, yeah? But there is no self. It's an image provoked by the ideation of selfing. So it's verbing. So you're listening to verbing, verbing, and there's just a subtle assumption. He, he does it beautifully if you follow it. I may have, you know, he may not have meant this at all, but this is how I see it right now, which is one of the bedrocks of the teachings of Ram Maharshi is this. He says, there's a presupposing of a non-existent thing. Now, if you've had a certain experience, it'll be easy to see that the body is non-existent. Yeah. Something is existing or lighting it up, but it's not the source of the light. Yes. Because obviously, if you met someone and you knew him for 20, 30 years, and you called it maybe Uncle Fred, and then you go to a wake and he's in a coffin. And there's the body that you've been calling Uncle Fred, but you may get a huge hit that that ain't Uncle Fred because you're seeing in all of its inert wonders the non-existent thing. Yeah. Whatever was enlivening it has seemingly left or just dispersed. Yeah. And now Uncle Fred isn't Uncle Fredding anymore. So, and so you see it as a non-existent thing. And then maybe in hindsight, when you get older, like for me, when I heard non-duality, I realized why I saw Uncle Fred as the body, because I was seeing everyone from the body called Paul. So I was projecting, there was not me, there was, there's no me involved in this at all. There was a projecting of this sort of mistake onto everything else. And sometimes I'd have these sudden wax where I'd see a person who I thought was a body for 30 years, and then I see the body without the person or whatever, it was obvious that they, they weren't the body. I didn't go to school or any seminar. It just was like, I was nine years old. It just whacked me. That ain't Uncle Fred. My mom says, oh, she just took me back. But I said, that ain't Uncle Fred. That's a fucking inert, non-existent thing called the body. So it says, it doesn't just say there's a presupposing of a non-existent thing. That's not what's being presupposed. The presupposed is the non-existent thing is an existent thing. This is where it all starts going in a certain direction. Yeah, We want to change a lot of shit, but very really entertain the idea of changing the direction. We just want to change the, what we're running into and everything or how we run into it. But yeah, yeah. So Presupposing means you're assuming something and it's now is it's giving a big dollop of time, a big shot of time. So when you assume it, it's pre-assumed. So when there's assuming that you're the doer, when you're aware or conscious of a doing, it's pre-assumed that you've been a doer all your fucking life. Yeah, this is the bondage. It uses time to bind you to this idea of being the doer. At every time there's a claiming of being the doer, it implies you're a historical doer. 
So you feel like you've been a doer of a lot of shit. That's amazing, really. Yeah? Amazing. So presupposing non-existent thing of being an existent thing. Yeah? Okay. There's a great statement that uh, Hoang Po said, whatever can be perceived, which would be a non-existent thing, I perceive Uncle Fred's body, yeah, cannot be that which was is perceiving. Obviously, the perceiving sort of had left the perceived, yeah. Therefore, the perceived wasn't the perceiving. That was the mistake. I thought the perceived, the body of Uncle Fred, which was the perceiving or the being of Uncle Fred, it wasn't the being of Uncle Fred. Yeah. So whatever can be perceived, that non-existent thing cannot be perceiving. And the head is calling that perceiving the non-existent thing and says it's an existent thing. So the non-existent thing is the seer, the hearer, the feel, the taste, the touch. How can it go wrong? Yeah, <laughs> that's how it can go wrong. Yeah. How 2001 takes over the fucking mission. Yeah, you start seeing everything from a self-centered point of view. Yeah, you didn't choose it. Did you know you were looking at everything from a self-centered point of view when you were like five or six, seven? No, I had no idea. I couldn't get into anyone else's camera location. It was just sort of, this is what I got. and This must be all of me. And then it was seen as me, called me. So what am I going to say? I wasn't questioning it. I was questioning everything else. But fuck you. I don't want to hear this. <laughs> like that. I was listening to this like the fucking Greek oracle. <laughs> I did. I had great faith in what the head was telling me. Yeah, it did. I mean, it took me fucking pretty far. I went up. I was like a cartographer of a long bottom. <laughs> For years living on a yeah on on a reliable situation with an unreliable an unreliable situation with an unreliable GPS. Yes. Wow. And every time I would not learn, it was blamed because I should have learned, but this is all bullshit. I was expecting like a robot to fucking act differently. And it can't. And that was some of the greatest relief I ever got. It started with recovery when, um, because you do a lot of shit out there when you're drunk and loaded and driven to, to get a relief. I mean, you step on a lot of people's toes and a lot of shit can happen. Yeah. And usually you felt bad and how, and that would motivate you to keep getting loaded so you could escape feeling as bad as that. So you were really, making new shit so you wouldn't deal with the old shit, really. It's the best way to hide the old shit was making new shit every day, yeah? It didn't work, but you thought it worked, yeah? Because you didn't want to deal with that. You were so afraid because of being the doer. And then when I got, I got surprised one day when I was just living and trying to impress this girl, somebody who lived next door to my friend's apartment got invited by my friend and I thought, she, she came in with paint on her pants. I thought she was asking me about being a painter, house painter, painting her kitchen. But she says, hey, hello, Paul. Do you remember me? I said, no. She says, you always owe me 500 bucks. So I had ripped her off 500 bucks. And uh, you would think I would have felt a lot of guilt and shame. But I didn't because I had gotten a modicum of understanding by AA pre uh, presenting addiction as a disease. And I really had a clear idea. And this is what I said to her. You know what? I'm going to pay you for this. And I'm going to say, but I would have done to you what I did to anyone. I would do to anyone else what I did to you unless you could physically stop me, really. And uh, and I made the amends, not all at once, but I gave her 500 bucks and everything like that. But I got some space from it because I saw this thing that's driving me is somehow a disease and it just opened up to see more. And then I saw a large swath of the thoughts that were playing were alcoholic thoughts and I got some space from them. And then it just took it all the way. And I started to see what's this, this incredible influence that hides behind one of the smallest words, my, M-Y. 
what's going on with that? Because I saw what came after mine was completely changed by mine. Yeah, and I used to do a little workshop in AA since 91, and I put money down and sex and health, and I go, okay, everyone gets a hit on those three that trigger some kind of meaning. I'm going to change everything without changing one letter of the word. My money, my health, my relationships. Wow. So I want everyone here to have a lot of money. Hello. But I don't want anyone to have any of my money. Yeah. Yeah. Money is money, but not when it's my money. <laughs> it means a whole lot more than when it's money. See, that's amazing. It was like unbelievable. And instead of you know, getting so involved in what came after the Mai, I started looking at the Mai and seeing this huge, tr like, transfer of meaning from some fucking place into the light that I was responding or reacting to, yeah? And all this meaning being dumped into situations through this fucking, like, conduit or tube of Mai, yeah? And then all these things started bringing me relief because once I saw there were my thoughts, Oh, man. You know, you could come and talk to me and a thought could be ruining your day, but it wouldn't ruin me, my day, unless I took the same thought and called it mine, then it would have the possibility of ruining my day. That was an, a good bit of information to figure out because everyone gives a lot of meaning to thoughts, but it's really not the thoughts. The thoughts are just... They're like half ton, quarter ton, one and a half ton pickups. Yeah, they can hold, hold some shit, but they have their limitations. But my, my thoughts can do fuck. There's a lot of power in there. And then the same thing with resentment, which is a thing that kills most alcoholics and addicts, at least from the old days, was resentment or grievance, you know? And resentment is to re-feel something, resent, Terry. So... All right, I was taught to look at them as my resentments. I, after a while, I said, wait a minute, that's not even what the book says. It says resentment is a manifestation of self in my life. I'm not self. Why am I calling resentments mine unless I'm in the act of being identified as self? It's just fucking, a, it wasn't like a Mesopotamia investigation it was fucking pretty obvious. I just saw it. I didn't, there's nothing to do. I just saw it. I became aware of it. And then that awareness, uh, it's, can you imagine, you know, you have something that's really a stain that's really bad. And then they have some of these incredible cleaners. You just pour a couple of drops on it. You don't do anything. Just walk away for five minutes. You come back and it's sort of like dust. This is sort of like what awareness was. Awareness was coming, like entering into things that I was just driven by. Never really looked, never looked at the dashboard, the speedometer, or nothing, just fucking reacting and everything. Started seeing the mechanism of what's driving it and the foreignness of it, which was so cool. The foreignness was the key when it come to recovery. That which was defeating me was defeating me as me. It's a bad combo. Yeah. Once I saw that which was defeating me as not me and foreign to me, I started to be entertained and feel, you know, I can be free from it. Yeah. Yeah. And so it has. It's happened that way. So I'm a, I think the touchstone is awareness and non-duality can bring you to a lot of those touchstones with the non-duality understanding of duality, basically. it's du And you and I are the epitome of duality. We're dualism. We're an occupation of subject-object all day. And this is the essence of duality because duality is a projection from dualism. Yeah, When there's a sense of dualism, then you see things dualistically. You know, th there's not a world, it's not like the fourth planet called duality. There's no planet of duality. It's a move. It's how we see things, and how we see things. This is a dreaming, and the dreaming is just how we see this. It's there for that, and it goes on. So sometimes you're thought about 
which means you're like the subject. Sometimes you're that, no, that which is thought about, which make you the, the object. And sometimes you believe you're the thinking of it, which would make you the subject. You're neither of those. This is non-duality. It doesn't say what you are. It very, very clearly points out to, points out to us what we're not. That's the whole, that's the only thing that's necessary because attempting to move from where we are not to ar to arrive at where we are is the fundamental wild goose chase. It takes on a lot of different forms and traditions, but it's the same fucking thing. You're trying to get out of something that you're not in, or you're trying to get into something that you're not out of. Yeah, this is the beauty of the message. So you are what you're looking for. This doesn't have a it doesn't have 30 illustrations how you have to look, how you have to behave, how much you gotta have, long hair, blue eyes, whatever, all these requirements. No, you are right now what you're looking for. What? Well, yeah. This is the message of non-duality. I hope it rings for you. And then if it does, it's gotta be followed up with warnings because I'll tell you. The system is going to react to the message and it's going to try to neuter the message by saying, I'm the one who heard the message. Yeah. And it's going to go into absurd lengths to become a non self as a self. It is. I've watched it all. So this is the message and the warnings. And really, you're coming back here for the warnings, literally, because they need to, it's a good to have those reminded because the system is an of time. It uses time for its little nefarious activities. So you would be easily over something that when it happened, there was a claiming of being the one who did it. But it's very difficult when the claiming of being the one who did it triggers a historical claiming that you've been the doer of fucking everything. That's a, that's a much bigger mountain you're dealing with. Much bigger mountain. So time piles on a lot, yes? And the head uses time a lot, a huge amount. The head is amazing because it presents a, a verb of selfing that implies something. And then we, we trigger what's implied, this idea of self. And then the self is presupposed before everything. And now something that was doing called selfing that implies the self. Now the self says it's the one that's selfing. It's insane. Well, the product of selfing claims to be the source of the selfing. You know you're fucked. Yeah. And that's the great news. You're fucked. It's so great because you're not that which is fucked. That's what's that which is wanting not to be fucked is fucked. <laughs> he finally gets cornered and he can't move. Yes. And then and then you realize I'm not that. It's unbelievable. So this. This incredible drive not to be fucked while all the while being fucked is, is huge, has a huge loss of interest in it. And now you let everything just land. And you know what? All the shit you thought was real will reveal itself not to be real. When you as reality are trying to make it unreal, it's as real as real can be. It is. When, when the head is using reality to make shit unreal that's already unreal it makes it real it makes it seemingly real it appears real to the reality it does i had it when i came in aa i swear to god i felt i have was successfully escaping tons of shit for years even though i was morally bankrupt fucking nothing but i still thought i was winning the race i got an aa and everything caught up with me you know the fear of being a fraud i'm a fucking fraud my tai chi master from the past told this lady and she told me and it hurt my feelings because i love this guy oh paul's are like a self-centered parasite i was oh, oh, oh. My, my master <laughs> saw the inner, my real, my real self, whatever, was super painful, yes? But then everything caught up on me. I was, I thought it was piling on, yes, and this and that, and blah, 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 blah. But then, and the fear of it landing was, it's going to kill me. It's going to kill me to be a fraud. Though it was killing me not try, to try not to be a fraud, 
But the, the, the logic was, it's going to kill me if I'm a fraud. It's going to kill me if I'm selfish and self seeking And then there, and so oh, landed. And then what? I didn't die. And I finally, I saw that which I was making real was unreal. Man, oh, fucking vivid. It was a vivid, it's a vivid recognition. Vivid, because I had been using the light to run away from that fucking light. I had very much. And so luckily, it's sort of like recovery like tripped me as I was running. <laughs> it just it took a big fall. And when I took the fall, everything I was running from caught up with me. <laughs> and then it was revealed I'm not that. Oh, if I had a like a puritanical understanding, it would have put probably... I would have stopped whipping myself with fucking whips with those things, rocks on me, to punish me even more. May occult this forever. But thank God it was a non-dual understanding arose, which is, bro, here's the solution. I'm not that. Oh, fucking great. <laughs> I've never greeted all this information with anything of, oh, I don't want to be that. I'm not, I'm not. No, I'm not that. Clear. What? Yeah. Yeah, so it's been very liberating. And I'll tell you, the biggest bondage was the need to be liberated, really. And that thing needs to be liberated, and it can't. It can't liberate itself from self. It can't. It's mechanical. Yeah? It's like a, the machine wants to have freedom from the machine in the machine. The freedom is being out of the machine. In the machine, you're going to get the machine effects. Yeah, it's just the way it goes. But if you see that you're not the machine, you will see those effects will still happen, but they're not going to be as grandiose or as large or as built up into these huge shit. They're not. You're going to travel lighter through it. Yes. And you'll probably be able to laugh a lot more. Yeah. So that's... The message is you are that, and then the warnings are something doesn't see that. <laughs> yeah. It sees it. When it says I'm that, it's I'm that as this. It's not I'm that negating this. It's I'm that as this. Yeah. And when we talk about God made us in, in his own image, no, we've made God in our own image. Yeah. We made God in our image. And it's not our image. Yeah. Yeah. We've taken ourselves to be a spacesuit, believing our whole existence dependent on this spacesuit, but it isn't. Yes. So, yeah. It was very, that's why here at the talks, I remember the day it happened. My friend Kyle down in LA, we were having a talk at an improv theater. And, uh, he what well, he was the guy at the door, yeah. And so all these people came, and then when we left, after they left, he came up to me because he had been listening to a lot of people, and a lot of people say, "Hey, everything this guy says goes over my fucking head." So he said, "Well, what about that, Paul?" I said, "Well, that's where we're aiming. <laughs> we're not trying to get this message through to you. We're trying to get it around you. To me, this activity is the obstacle." Yeah, it's not that you're not the, the the receptacle of understanding. You are what is understood. This is what you learn to understand. It is not filling it up with more understanding. You understand this. You understand what you used to want to understand everything else from. You understand it as not you. This is the beauty of it. And if it, you may make mistakes, but once it sets, you're going to know it because you're going to travel lighter through this whole event where you used to crucify yourself over some fucking unknown trespass that you had no idea to see past your fucking nose. There's, there's a lot more compassion. You know? And in a way, the Urban Renewal Project just got canceled, you know? It's half built and that's fine. Yeah. It's not moving towards the stars. It's not going anywhere. Yeah. The, 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 the basic maintenance that's needed to keep it going, I'm in the habit of doing. And then basically it's, uh, 
I don't see it as a, you know, a chariot to the gods. I don't believe it's going to be entering the 11th dimensional reality. I believe it only appears here in the dreaming of bodies. I don't think there's bodies anywhere else but in the mind of the dreaming of bodies. I don't. So, yeah. All right. Anyone, Mike? Hey, oh, we've been on. We've been on. We've been muted this whole time. No, um, no, you're good. I I don't see any hands right now. I think Mike had to run. But it have to do with me Braille for now. On. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think Mike had to uh, step away, so I'm hosting, but I don't see any hands currently from the web. Currently, let, let's keep it that way. Yeah. Let's luxuriate in the relief the message brings us. You mean I don't have to be better than I am now at one o'clock? Yes, you don't have to. Do, you, do I have to earn the dessert I really like to have for dinner today? No, I don't have to earn it. Who's putting up all these hoops that I have to jump through? Not you. Do I have any requirements necessary to fulfill to be what I am? No. How am I going to get there? You haven't left. <laughs> when do I arrive now? There you go. Every little move, every little twitch of that mental muscle just gets relieved. It's a beautiful bomb, B-A-L-L. -L. Yes? We and I can have my true goals today, ending this talk at two and going to have a coffee with some friends and Chris and Jesse and some new people. And right. doc take them into the Zen bitch slap, secret handshake. <laughs> okay. yeah, hey. Two on the side. Before the secret handshake, Paul, David Lowe has his hand up. Oh, David Lowe, all right. Hey, David Paul. Lowe got the secret answer. He's just hiding it from others. All, All right, right, David. Great. Hey, uh, greetings from Philadelphia. Oh, good. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. be up there. I'm going to be over there in June. I think we're trying to set something up for Doylestown, Pennsylvania. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I got a question. Um, you mentioned in one of your talks at some point uh, something about, to me, this sort of amounts to uh, like a spiritual practice to. Uh, the background doesn't get much attention. You know, the foreground, we are, we're always looking at specific objects and everything, but the background gets ignored or overlooked or doesn't get good press or whatever, whatever it was that you said. You see, could you uh, say more about that, if you could? Well, just look at self-centeredness. That's usually how most people are seeing things, is through a self-centered lens. So one thing you know is self-centeredness Everything is seen as it pertains to self. Yeah. So if self is seen as a thing, it's interested in things. Yeah? Now, things need space to appear in, but the space gets underemphasized, and what's appearing in it gets overemphasized. So if you came in this classroom and there was like 12 feet of black chalkboard, you walked in and a uh, person put one little white chalk mark, your attention would go right to that one little point at the expense of the whole black void, so to speak. You don't, you're not choosing to do that. That's just how the mechanism works, yeah? Focus is in at the expense of a larger relaxed view. And usually what you're seeing is actually a dualistic reflection of the seer, really. So the seeing has a lot of interest the thing that is seen to reinforce the seer. Yeah, so this, you see this, you stop calling it you, and therefore you're not moved to correct fucking anything. So this is not about getting the new marching orders. It's about disarming. You just see it, and you see the, the secondary reaction to it, which is also selfing. And you see it and just see it and see where it takes you. I don't think it's going to take you anywhere. As the head gets ready to go to the next battle, you'll be in the behind lines, sitting there. You're the space that everything appears in. So yeah, the idea of a thing giving itself reality would be a projection of real things. That's, so there you go. And you don't, and then people, of course, they see this and now they try to not see things as a thing. Well, good luck. You're just a fallback 
is always going to see things. Yeah, it's the system. The system is reliable in its, its unreliability. It will just keep doing it. And so if you miss the lesson, you're going to get it again. You're going to recognize self can't get out of self. It's just, you know, it just doesn't get it. So, yeah. So in this sense, because we're talking more about the expression of, of the message in this place of duality. So there is traveling lighter and then there's traveling heavy. Yeah. One thing induces more, more the possibility of traveling lighter than the self-centered view, which usually induces more heaviness. Yes. Now, you could say self-centeredness is sort of a view based on a myopic view. And then there's another possibility when your awareness is freed from that form of looking of a more relaxed awareness would be a panoramic view. So the panoramic view totally includes the myopic fucking view. But the myopic cannot include the panoramic because it sees it as a threat to its myopic view because it's self-centered, yes? It doesn't like a God brought before it as the God. So uh, look at Japanese art. We talked about it the other day. Japanese art would have a very little to do and the leaf would not be there for the leaf's point of view, would be the emphasize the space around the leaf, yeah? So they were playing with these views with the hopes of triggering this unsuspected inner resource that you can see anew. You don't have to look through the lens of self-centeredness. And usually we're only doing that because we think there's no other option. We think that that's the way I see. It's not the way you see. You see and you can see differently in a lot of different ways. You can, yeah. So, well, this idea, okay, so when I go into a room, it used to be more pronounced. I felt the space of the room before I saw the things in it. I do. Just like when I go to AA meetings, I forget most of the people that were at the meeting, but I never forget the sense of the presence in the meeting. Mm. So I feel that's the grace of recovery. I feel it for 36 years. You know. I've forgotten most of the people I've ever seen at AA meetings, but I never forgot that sense because it's there and it's here. So, yeah, so it's just, this isn't about teaching the dog to go a new way. It's negating that you're the dog. And that will allow other ways to occur to the dog. Yeah. You can't have the dog to be the emphasis because then the dog, if it's old, it's not going to learn new tricks. But new tricks can be learned about the old dog. Yeah, maybe it's not you. I'm serious. It's just, just the head wants to shrink possibility. This is it's one of the greatest examples is recovery. It really is. So let's say my idea. I'm you know I come from that community, so I am emphasizing it today. But we have a little idea about the definition of an alcoholic and a recovered alcoholic. So. The alcoholic calls you after they drink. The recovered alcoholic calls you before they drink. Because if the recovered alcoholic calls you before they drink, there's a lot of possibility there. If the recovered alcoholic calls you after the drink, the possibilities have shrunk completely. Now they got to fucking go to a meeting, don't drink for the next hour. Yes, it just becomes very, very limited what is essential to do. Yeah, and it's all the change is, is the before or after. So if you're living in the after and you have a conceptual idea of the before, that conceptual idea of the before isn't going to make much effect on the after. But if you're appearing in the after, but you are of the before, that being of the, the before is going to bring a lot of inf influence to what comes after. Just telling you, that's how I see it. Yeah. Instead of that which is dwelling on the after, trying to, you know, beat them into behaving that it's like the before when it's just the after, it doesn't work in my view. It doesn't. I just rather use all that not working to bring about a huge success. It fails because it's not you. Yeah. You can't arrive at where you already are. I know I wanted to by 
I wanted to be what I wasn't arriving at where I am because I could have made a blog or something somehow get some adoration from fucking past girlfriends or something. Who knows? But there was a strong stubborn drive in the in the programming of the system to be there. Yeah. Even uh, people have experiences when they're absent. I saw it with epiphanies. I would be in some event and then the, the, the event would come to a crashing halt when I had this certain set of thoughts, which is I'm having an epiphany. As soon as the claiming of the epiphany stamp, the stamp, the epiphany was dead. It was like a piece of meat. It was like, oh, well, I, big epiphany, but what do I do with it? You know, the, it was the V, it's the, it was the epiphany that was awesome. And because there was an absence of the time space character, so to speak, which is just the revelation of the truth. It wasn't you were present and then this incredible miracle, you became absent. The absence is verifying the fact that the weirdest mental miracle is you taking yourself to be fucking present. <laughs> That's fucking really the insanity of it all. So it switches the information. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope that helped. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Anyone else? I don't see any other hands up currently. Oh, I'm going to start saying goodbye then with everyone. Yeah. Oh, we got a question here. She's going to pay for it later. <laughs> All right. <laughs> they, they don't have it in the book. Oh, yeah. No, it came out of observation of a lot of people who follow the book. This is the same thing. There was the message, then people did the message, and then they brought out about a great warning. The same thing with non duality. People hear non duality. Da, 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 shut, some other shit starts happening they don't understand and so it has to be followed by a warning AA followed it with a warning self can't get out of self fucking hallelujah because that's what most people were noticing they were doing they were trying to get out of self as self so they admitted hey self can't get out of self the same thing with non-duality non-duality presents an idea and then it backs it up with warnings and by seeing the warnings having that understanding, you will see that which arises when it's introduced to this idea as not you. You'll actually, it'll, it'll come out of the weeds and you'll see it. And with these understanding, with these pairs of glasses, you'll see what you're not, or you'll see the emperor without any clothes. And that doesn't, that's not the point. The point is when you see the emperor doesn't have any clothes when it's wearing clothes. That's really the point. The peak experience is to see the emperor with no clothes, but the, the, the dog shit awareness is knowing no matter how much he's wearing, he has no clothes. That's the point to me, to me. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it's beautiful. Same thing. AA, a lot of warnings. There was a message, da, da, da. There's a solution. And what, when a solution shows up, a lot of problems arise because we're usually representing the problem. <laughs> so when the problem greets a new solution, you got to got warnings about how the problem reacts to a new solution. You need the warnings or it's going to do what it does. You're going to be believed that you're the one that's doing something you're not doing. We have that whole thing with the lion and the sheep, the same thing. Yeah. The lion has the big hit, the young lion, that it's a lion. Yeah. You've got to go somewhere else. You can't look at the pond with the old lion every day. Yeah, the old lion splits. He's got a family. And as the young lion's leaving the pond with this incredible revelation, in two seconds, the sheep program has claimed it and neutered it and made it an experience the sheep had. Oh, I had this incredible lion experience at the pond. No, you didn't. It was a revelation of your own reality. And now the unrealities came, arose and claimed it. These are the warnings. The warnings we have in recovery and the warnings in non-duality. Because you're going to see the system is going to do what it does with anything else with the idea of non-duality. Yet, the idea of non-duality is up to that task. Because it brings the, the bogusness 
of the misunderstandings seem to stick out like sore thumbs, other than when you used to run into them in other processes. I, that's just my humble opinion. Non-duality had the, the set of understanding that just worked where I, where I was sitting. Yeah. And, but it needs to be accompanied by warnings, it does, because the problem is going to react to that solution. It is. Yeah. And it's mechanical. This is the thing I noticed with a lot of people. They were thinking, they felt guilty about doing the selfie. Yes, they're not doing it. It's the brain, it's mechanical. There was some hidden feeling of guilt because they chose to do it. Like, see, people in recovery, we have it a lot. They believe they hate themselves. No one hates themselves. Something hates you. I don't think it's you or you're your own worst enemy. I do not believe you are your own worst enemy. There may be an enemy in you that's your worst enemy. I don't believe it's you. I don't. And the same thing, this is why we need warnings up to come with the message. Yes? I'm thinking uh, all the shit that comes in your head and the thinking goes on, I would try to have to quiet it down for you. But I'm realizing to you, you're saying that uh, your presence is there no matter what's happening and this shit could go on and on and it's not going to affect you uh, and it won't, it won't change you and, and so you just let it go and you just, you just relax yes. about it. and it's going to be there in that bad awful moment and you're going to be there in that epiphany with that dude yes yes it's, it's there all the time yeah it's a good assurance. Yeah. Yeah, that's how the understanding sinks. Because the, the head wants to bounce your ball on the surface. Yeah, but really, this is a sinking. So you sink and you recognize everything. I know, like I got run over by a car. Affected my physical life forever since. 30, more than, what, 80, 44 years. 44 years, had the, probably the biggest sort of effect of one event that happened to you, getting run over by the car in the physical wet world, yes? But that still can only reach the level of like a head of tattoo, yeah? When I pass away, it's over, yes? So all of these effects are time-based. And if we always use this little example, if last night you had a dream and in that dream you were drinking like a smoothie and it had you you had a vivid dream of like a 10 second gulp of a smoothie and then you woke up and the next night you went to sleep and you had a 300 year opus where you not only incarnated you reincarnated like six times and when you woke up it took the same amount of time to wake up from the 10 second dream to the 300 dream because only in the dream does the time matter. Yeah, you would think if uh, you had a dream that encompassed 300 years, if time mattered when you woke up, that it would take a couple of weeks to get over. Yes, there would be a different quota. Oh, that was only a 10 second, no, it's a second. No, this 300 years, at least a couple of weeks. Yeah, yes, do unto Caesars unto Caesars, but time is only in the dreaming. There's no Caesar out of time. So you're rendering unto Caesar what's due to Caesar now in this event. But after this event, there's no dues or fucking debts or anything like that to pay. Yeah. You know, I overdosed a number of times, went into a coma, been gone. I've been gone here and yet not gone here. But I tell you, every time I would come out of wherever I was, it had absolutely nothing to do with the place. Nothing. And this place is only this place. Yeah. The effects of this, this is not a broadband uh, frequency. It's like an 80 year little fucking aberration. Yeah. So, of course, the head wants to make mountains out of molehills, and it still does, but I'm not that, thank God. If I wanted to make this thing, fuck, unbelievable. 
When you approve this machinery, it's part of its fucking falsehood, yes? You trying to fix the mechanism is part of the mechanism. Yeah, yeah. Is it difficult, like, the sense of smell or taste or touch or something like that? Yeah, because the head is just like a tool, right? Yeah, yeah. so just like I touch this and then I don't touch it. I taste something and then I don't taste it. I see something and then I don't taste it. I think about something and then I don't think about it. But as this way of creating time where I was and I will be and therefore I am, so then I think I'm moving in this thing, right? And it's not there. It's just a thought that you overlook that. <laughs> you know I mean? That's right. And uh, the base element, which is here now, never gets affected. Right. Nothing ever pours over the rim of here now. <laughs> Nothing ever pours over the rim of here now. Yeah, it's all this that we're entertaining is encompassed by here and now and can't break the boundary of here and now. So you're thinking about yesterday, but yet it's happening now. Yeah, the thinking is happening now. The thought that you're thinking it is happening now. Nothing escapes here and now. Yeah, and this here and now as an appearance, appearance is going to end. Yeah. You're going to have an end tonight when you go to sleep. For all intents and purposes, this whole thing has shut down completely until you wake up. <laughs> or there's a waking up and then there's a you. And you run your little thing again. And then thank God, it's we're so important that we're absent one third of the day. <laughs> we're the most important cog. Yet it goes on better when we're uh, on the sidelines. <laughs> what did I miss? You, thank God. <laughs> oh, thank God. Shoo, I needed some of that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so. It, this is not about, about you not taking things seriously. It's about seeing you're not that which takes things seriously. Just a lessen the fucking wallop of everything that's all it's not denying any fucking thing it's just negating the idea there's a you and you know many of us have tried a lot of safe for you know the formula or whatever to get the safe open to me this is what opened it is to recognizing i'm not that you feel this and thorough about what you're not tell the truth and yeah i'm not that so, you know, it's been the last answer. It's been the best thing I ever heard. First, I needed the years to hear it, which was getting me, you know, sober. And this is the best thing I've ever heard. The message of non knowledge. Yeah. It's just the most perfect platform. You are already where you want to get to. Yeah. I'll give you one more thing and then we're going to go. Because this was, this one really was incredible. I was living in uh, Byron Bay, Australia, and I had a girlfriend, and she had the strangest thing she asked me not to do. She made me promise, and that was not to pick up girl hitchhiking. So I said, oh, that's fucking great. I fucking great. I ride my bike usually anyway. So, okay, okay, I solemnly, and I lived it. Didn't pick anything, but then we broke up, and I picked this girl up. <laughs> she told me about this thing they were going to have in the Osho community, Rajneesh community, called the mirror, the path of love. And uh, I've done with retreats, but this was like emotional, and I knew I was fucked emotional, you know, crippled, whatever, <laughs> being an addict. So this got my, and she was from France. I liked her, so I. I listened to the pitch, but basically just to hear it in French. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, so I had this thing about should I go or not go? Because I had the money, but I wanted to buy a around the world ticket. So I called the travel agent and I said my situation, and she had done this thing. And she said, Oh, fucking do it. And you'll probably still go on the trip. And she gave me that inclusive idea. I usually thought like this or that. And she said, No, oh, this and that. I said, all right. So I signed up and I went. And they could produce like cathodic events. They were really good at it. You know, controls, environment and everything. So we were, it was an eight-day affair. This is about the sixth day and everyone's, you know, pretty bright and loving everything. And 
uh, they turn on the music and they got all the mattresses. And then I just went off and I'm like crying and I'm laughing. I'm crying and I'm chanting. I can never get back. I can like I left the Godhead. You know what I mean? Like the ultimate prodigal son. I can never get back. And I'm like mourning. You know, this, and I'm, uh, but I was as the people who are running it that I was seen as wow this guy got it so they picked me up and they I it was the first one brought out <laughs> it was it was like being number one on the hit parade <laughs> and then a couple of days later I had I had heard non-duality for a couple of years I realized this whole idea I could never get get back was because I had never left. <laughs> now all the tears and the yearning and the longing and the moaning was based that I had left. Yeah. There was just an assumption I had left and then I had no ability ever to get back. It was all bullshit. All bullshit. <laughs> I had never left. <laughs> All the girls I had a chance to go out with when I shared that, they all never saw me. <laughs> they didn't like the non-dual guy. <laughs> but it was incredible because I saw there was so much like juice in the I I can never get back. Like I had done the most heinous thing anyone possibly could have done. I slapped the godhead and said, fuck you or something. No, I never left. None of the, all this fucking drama. For the sake of drama was great, but I was taken seriously. And I got smacked by this nice and dish slap and then bam. You were just as fresh as stuff as a good Irish scabby. Uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. The mortal sin. That's right. That's the that's the that's the, the the anatomy of the mortal sin. I can never get back. I don't remember what the fuck I did. But uh, it's not your position to think about uh, mortal sin. All right. Well, listen. Thank you, guys. David Lowe, always a pleasure to see you. Eric Platt, Jamie and Barbara. I'm getting a lot of Jamie, not much Barbara, but it's okay. Nice to see you. David Bitterman. Eric and Sa and Santa Barbara, nice to see you, Eric. We got Kathleen. She's in there. She's uh, she's got to go back onto the walking path. Yeah, yeah. If you see anyone from Zen Bit Slap on that walking path, give them a fucking slap. Yeah, yeah. Sherry, nice to see you, honey. Johannes, oh my friend, Johannes, nice to see you, bro. Ben. As always, Terry Cavarillo, Judy Lovins. Judy Lovins. We all we loved we loved having Judy Lovins here live. Mike Clark, as always. We got Jay. G see you, honey. Jay. Gio. Ariane. Mika. Paul Hederman, who's there? <laughs> Every time I look for Paul Hederman, he's not there. Just an empty square. <laughs> Steve, San Diego. Matt Julian. Oh, Matt, how are you, man? Yeah, good. Thanks, Paul. Good. Good to see you. Vlad. Vlad, my main man in Portugal. Nice to see you, Vlad. Did you cut your hair, bro? Or you just have it pulled back? Oh no, it's still there. Okay. Yeah, it's still there. <laughs> All right. Susan H. Miss Volkman. Zoe Banks. Ah, Zoe Banks. Yeah. 78, 1978. I've been watching 1978. It could be a bomb. Oh, Miniola in jail. <laughs> uh, Miniola, Long Island. 78 might be a bomber. What's that? No, nineteen seventy-eight. Oh, no, I don't want to go there. Oh, you know the mic. I remember it. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry, then. My bad. So, Esther, Esther, we come. I think we'll be back there in June. Just keep an eye on the website. Middle of June. Chris H. Dennis W. Hari. Oh, Hari. Hey, Paul. Nice to see you, honey. 
<laughs> in the dark. <laughs> are, you, are you on another dark retreat? No, I'm not. I'm just have my video off. All right. All right. <laughs> Lucia, Fletch, phone numbers. Thank you. Hey, thanks so much for uh, holding the space with all of us here. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Thank you.